So, hey all, I am Jayanth and uh, I work at Shuttle and today I'm going to talk about a few different approaches to connect your uh, components to the Redux state. Uh, primarily, the components are going to be in this manner. They're going to, there's going to be a parent and it's going to have multiple children inside it, uh, basically to render a list, right? So, uh, one note that this is not going to have a lot of technical details in the interest of time. So, I'm going to show you how the state looks like initially. Uh, your state is going to have this bit, items, it's an array of objects, and uh, it, say it's got a lot of items, it's, it's a big array, so it has like 5,000 items or something. In the first approach, you have your state, the parent is connected to the state directly, so the items, the entire array is passed directly as it is, and then inside the parent you have the, something like items.map, and uh, the, children are rendered, the children are rendered inside it uh, normally, like how uh, we normally do that. The second approach, which is probably a bit more uncommon. So in this one, the state is connected to the parent, but the entire items array is not passed. Only the items dot length is passed. So the parent only gets the number. Now inside, now inside your parent, you iterate basically items dot length number of times. And uh, when each child is rendered, each child gets its own index. So the children are not getting objects this time, which they are, uh, which they are in the state. They are only getting a number. Now, for each child that is also connected to the state, you see that second bit of state. Uh, you see that second bit of state there. It's basically the same, but I saw card design. So the s each uh, each child is basically connected to the state as well. So they are getting the entire items array. But since uh, map state to props second argument also takes own props, uh, so you have access to the length prop, that, uh, sorry, index prop that they get. That means you can read the uh, the item at the given index that you actually want. So every child inside the parent is only getting the item that they are interested in. So this is the second approach. Now, the second one is obviously a bit more complicated to think about. So why would you go with that? What are the performance differences? The first approach for the very specific example that I've picked with 5,000 items on my machine took 1.7 seconds to render uh, each time on each update. The second approach took 5.5 milliseconds on average. This is after uh, multiple tests uh, at the same time with other external constraints remaining the same. The state is still the same as shown. Now you might wonder, like, uh, what about uh, react.memo? Like that's something, right? You can wrap uh, your component in memo and it supposedly should help. So I tried that too at a later time and this is what we get there. So the approach two is the complicated one that I talked about, which in this case, uh, at, a later, at a later run, took about 2.6 milliseconds on average. Perhaps I was running a fewer external processes. React.memo still took about 25.2 milliseconds. That's still about 10 times more on average. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you're interested in like how React actually handles DOM mutations and all of that, because you must know that React optimizes away DOM uh, mutations in these cases, uh, that is explained in the link that is there, bit.ly slash jbreduxperf. Uh, if the, you have any questions or if you think that the test could use improvements and all, you can reach out to me on Twitter or GitHub. Uh, that is all. Thank you very much.